When they warned us about the extinction level event, not a lot of people listened, and the few that did took refuge on a nearby planet. But upon entry, we were hit by a strange beam of energy and our ship was going down. We ran for our lives to get to the escape pods, and one by one we started dropping down. As I took a final look up to the aurora, I saw it blowing up. But that was the least of my problems. See, as I was plummeting down, a plate came loose and hit me in my head, and when I finally came to, it to quickly rush to extinguish on fires just as the aurora came crashing down in the ocean. My name is Kruger Ops, and you guys asked for it. Welcome to 100 Days Subnautica. And hey, if you're new to the channel and you find yourself enjoying this, leave a like, consider subscribing, and turn the bell on for future videos. Also, let me know what you guys want to see next. Not knowing if there were any other crew members left, I hopped in the ocean. Hey, this place isn't so bad. Come here, little fishy. Alien life. May have unexpected applications. I had a quick look at what I needed to make a scanner and then went searching. Copper is an essential component of all powered equipment. As I navigated through my very first cave, grabbing some goodies and then returning back home to make a scanner and give myself a quick little scan. Sure everything's fine. Self-scan complete. Vital Next up was the flashlight and repair tool, so after diving back in the water and putting my scanner to good work, it quickly got dark so I took refuge in my shelter. Is that a moon or Mars? And the next morning I was right back in the water, scanning around and familiarizing myself with the strange alien underwater world. What you got there, Mr. Fishy Sir? And after no luck finding sulfur, I finally decided to take back to the caves when I dove down and searched inside. And man, was this place filled with copper, titanium and quartz. After making my Myself some silicone I was able to craft a little survival knife and now I felt a little bit more protected. After another cave run the sun started to set so I went back to my little life pod, crafted myself the battery as well as the flashlight and now all that remained was the repair tool. But it was way too dark to go exploring and I still didn't know how to get sulfur. The next morning after I enjoyed the sunrise I went cave exploring when I spotted this strange little fishy that chased me down and exploded right behind me. Hey do you want to know what else is explosive? Our sponsor for today, Raid Shadow Legends. Are you ready to step into this epic world and immerse yourself as a powerful hero battling fierce monsters and fighting alongside champions? With stunning graphics and action-packed lure, immerse yourself in this fantasy adventure. Raid is a tactical-based MMO game with a strong emphasis on hero collection. Then master the skill of combining your champions in unstoppable teams and battling them in breathtaking dungeon arenas. Team up with other players to take on epic bosses and earn valuable rewards. Join a clan with a million players online and with over 650 unique champions to collect from and millions of unique character builds to get your perfect champion. As you journey through the realms of Deliria, collect and upgrade your champions, each with their own unique abilities and skills, is a champion for every playstyle. I also love big boss fights, so I'm always in the dungeons, taking on raids, awesome bosses, and the Iron Twins are my current nemesis. They're so hard to defeat, but I know it's going to be worth it. You know what else is worth it? This amazing deal Raid prepared for us for Christmas, running until 10th of January. Download Raid and set out on the festive adventure and stand a chance to win some amazing in-game and real-life prizes. Follow the details in the description. And this month, they released the legendary Ronda Rousey. Great Shadow Legends! Yes, Ronda Rousey. All you need to do is log in and play for 7 days in between now and February 28th and Ronda is all yours. But it doesn't stop there. New players, use my link or scan the QR code right there, earning yourself an amazing starter pack and some awesome in-game loot. Hurry, it's a limited time offer, so play Raid Shadow Legends today. So after downloading Raid and grabbing some sulfur, I was back at the grind making myself a repair tool and then got the ship back online. And after repairing the radio, I received a message. And since I wasn't gonna wait 11 years for my rescue, I took back to the caves but got chased down again. Stupid fish! Not another one! Stop chasing me! These things are gonna kill me. <gasps> There's another one, seriously! And after surviving three exploding fish in a row, I managed to quickly grab my breath, heal myself up, and then I took back to the cave, searching for silver and then finally finding a piece. I wanted to start work on my habitat, but got interrupted by a distress call. This is Life Pod 3, uploading our coordinates. We're plugging some holes in our emergency sea guide. This call was from actual humans, so I made a high capacity oxygen tank and then took to the location. Feeling nervous, not knowing what exactly had attacked them. Um, hello, is anyone still alive? But from a lack of response, I downloaded their crew voice log and then got myself an amazing blueprint that would soon change my life. But I couldn't help shake the feeling that I wasn't alone. Yeah. Ooh, what's this? Uh, 
I heard something. <laughs> I swear there's a sea monster here somewhere. And after summoning the courage and completing my scans, I quickly learned I wasn't wrong. What the hell was that? <laughs> Neil wasn't crazy. Luckily, this little fella got himself stuck and I was able to scan yet another fragment. I also finally saw what was making the noise and it was these huge reef back whales. Wait, is this the Leviathan? That's not scary. I collected myself some more coral reefs and now had everything I needed to make the computer chip but just needed one more piece of silver. But by the time I climbed up, it was pitch black. So the next day I dropped down some underwater storage lockers and after clearing up some space I was able to make the final bits needed for my sea glide. My first mode of transport and boy was this thing awesome. <laughs> I want to see you catch up to me now, sea monsters. Careful what you wish for, because after grabbing some more copper, I was nibbled on. Oh, what the hell was that? Okay, I need to get out of here. Advised, a common complication for cave divers is loss of orientation, followed by eventual asphyxiation. Don't forget being eaten. After grabbing more creep vine, I was finally able to make the radiation suit and then took back one more time to search for silver. You're growling behind me. Hey, little buddy. And after some perseverance, I finally had the silver. But then I went into the worst cave possible. That's pretty light. I'm being drawn to I can't do anything. And after being drawn in and being nibbled on yet again, I finally came to and I was able to make a quick run and escape with my life making my way back to the life pod to finally make myself the wiring kit followed by the habitat builder, but then got interrupted by another call. Again? Our pod was almost crushed by the Seamoth Bay on the way down. Now we're hanging on the edge of a cave system and this grim looking snake thing is trying to eat through the- Now as much as I was not looking forward to meeting the grim looking snake thing, I knew it was my job to try and rescue them. Well that's to say someone was still left alive, but I quickly learned there was no survivors and I had to take refuge inside as the snake looking thing turned out to be a sand shark and it now had me trapped inside. Can't get me stupid, just leave me alone. I was quickly running out of oxygen, but luckily I saw a gap just as I was about to run out, and I made a run for it. And after catching a breath of air, I went back down to scan the fragments of the sea mob. I didn't even care about the sand sharks in the area, this little mini sub was super important. But luckily all went okay. Local scans show a nearby cave entrance. Depth 90 meters, leading to an unknown environmental biome. Now as much as I wanted to dive deeper and see this biome, I did not have the means yet. As I spotted the Seamoth Bay of the Aurora, I knew I had to search for more fragments. And after scanning another one, I had just one to go. And not long after, I finally found it. But I wasn't paying attention to my oxygen and I had to rush for my life. <sighs> Was close. And after surviving the whole ordeal, I made my way back to my life pod and saw I had another voice message. This time you better be alive. In life pod six, request immediate assistance. We need assistance. <sighs> but this call didn't come with coordinates, so I needed to craft a compass and decipher the clue. Did you just poop on me? That's disgusting. So I took back to my favorite place, the kelp forest, in search for some more silver. Ooh, someone doesn't sound like a happy fishy. Eh? My search continued the entire day as I needed to get four pieces of silver for the compass as well as the rebreather. But finally I found the final piece needed and I made my way back to the life pod just as the sun was about to set. Quickly made my way on board and I started crafting the wiring kit, the compass as well as the rebreather. Now next up was the mobile vehicle crafting station. So I hopped in the water the next day, grabbed some acidic mushrooms and went searching for gold and more copper. I needed a battery for the sea glide as well as the power cell for the mobile vehicle bay. But I decided to get the sea glide back up and running first and then take to the location where LifePod 6 is in the hope to find more copper there. All that I knew it was located near red grass 400 meters northwest from the Aurora. So I started searching around, high and low, but with no Seamoth, oxygen was still a major problem and I constantly had to go back up to catch my breath. It started getting too dark to continue my search and I nearly got excited when I spotted a life pod, but this was one I had already discovered. After then crafting myself a beacon, I had another call. We're scanning for somewhere to park. We'll be in touch when we find Wait, is this a rescue? The next morning my search continued, searching through all the tall red grass and scanning some more fragments. I then dropped off my beacon at life pod 17 and went to search the cave below. Since my PDA told me about this, I thought it was important, but all it had was snakes, so I took back to the search. Well, that was until I heard something terrifying. 
and I knew there was something big out there. No, sweet baby Moses, what the hell is that? Okay, that's the thing I should be scared of. After luckily escaping with my life, I knew the sea glide was no longer my safest mode of transport. Not only would it be too slow to escape, but there were just so many more unexplored depths that I really wanted to see. And seeing strange creatures, I knew I needed a quick way to escape. As my search continued for any signs of life, part 6, as well as looking for some copper. Finally, I found some. I don't want titanium, give me copper. Oh, what the hell just bit me? What the hell was that? Now armed with the final resources needed and another near-death experience, I was also in dire need of some fluids. So I crafted some drinks and then after replenishing my thirst, I was finally able to craft the cell as well as the mobile crafting station. Finally, I could get to work to making the Seamoth. But since I didn't have the resources just yet, I went to listen to more messages, praying for a better sign of hope out there. This is Officer Keen in Light Pod 19. The last thing the captain did was give me coordinates for dry land. Now hearing there was dry land out there gave me a sense of new hope. So I went out to grab some more copper and then finally had all the resources that I needed to craft the Seamoth. The Seamoth is a fast, safe mode of transport. But remember that swimming is good for your glutes and endorphin levels. Daddy, you don't need to tell me. This thing's gonna be awesome. And boy, was I not wrong. After properly being welcomed, I quickly went to grab myself some drinks as well as food and cooked it up so I could have all my nutrition needs met. By the time I climbed up, I saw that the sun was about to set, so I thought I would set out to the location the next day. But that's when I got the most important message Aurora, of them we're all. We're approaching the planet now. We have a landing site for you that's... Well, it's better than the alternatives. We've sent you the coordinates. I decided to still go after the location, since maybe there might be survivors out there. But the problem was LifePod 19 was very deep. Warning. Maximum depth reached. Hard Deeper than the Seamoth could handle, so I knew I had to go down with a sea glide, since the location of the island was trapped inside. After grabbing some time capsules, I finally found the life pod and I went inside to grab the data disks. But still no sign of life. I then took back to the Seamoth and repaired some damage from the depths that I have caused and then took to the island location. Finally some dry land. And here I thought I was gonna spend a hundred days under the ocean. And then once I finally reached I found a little entry point in the center of the island as well as another data disk. A voice log from the people that had stayed on this island. I immediately took out to explore, seeing a little base on the top of a mountain cliff and I made my way up. I spotted yet another as well as some rifle fragments that would definitely come in handy. But this place looked abandoned decades ago as I grabbed myself some water as well as the nearby PDA and then made my way over to the second location only to spot another as I ventured through the mountain tunnels and then finally reached the top and went inside to grab another voice log and then made sense of what went wrong here. Look out of the window. No predators. Fresh food. So Mr. Paul, what went wrong then, huh? Hey Chief, you brought us to this sodden planet. Told us we'd see a lush payday. We take what we can carry and hunker down in a cave somewhere. I scouted a site. A couple hundred meters deep, lots of metal deposits. After hearing about their dispute, I found this shiny purple tablet. I don't know what the hell this thing is. Oh, what the hell is that? And after scanning the little big-eyed friend, I decided to make my way back to the Seamoth. I dropped down a beacon as well, so I would have this location for future reference, and then made my way back to the life pod to listen to another PDA message. Not knowing if I would have the time, as my rescue was quickly inbound. But this message told of a high-priority passenger remain, so I had had to go check it out. It's better be freaking Nelson Mandela or something, I swear if I miss my race. But once I finally reached the life pod, there was no body. So after grabbing the voice log and making my way out, I saw another sea monster and I decided I didn't want to mess with him today. So after rushing away, I turned around and I spotted a cave. And of course I had to see what was inside, hoping at least for some good loot. Ooh, what is this? Oh, it's a baby egg, I want that. You are currently inside a long calcified loot system. Evidence suggests it was eaten away by other life forms over many centuries to form these natural after my educational lesson and now that I had a specimen from the planet, I was ready to get the hell out of here. You following me? 
If you want to get race kid as well, a little fishy. Oh, you're fast. Okay. I'm going. I'm sorry. I decided to make another quick stop at my life pod to see if there were any messages from my rescue party that was about to land. And that's when I heard it. Nine new biological subjects designated. Sharing subject locations with other agents. I was being hunted by aliens and it was now high time to get out of here. Luckily, I was just moments away from being rescued. Massive energy signature in the region. And just as I submerged from the waters, I saw it. A massive alien-like structure. Just as my rescue was Survivor, arriving. We see you. Man, I don't know how you held out down there. Is that a building down there? With no means to warn them, and I've seen the movie Battleship, I knew this wasn't gonna end well. Everyone. Touching down in 10, 9, 8. And just as the sun was starting to rise, I saw the same beam of energy blow up my any means of rescue. No, 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 no. <laughs> my rescue! Oh, you did not just do that! I hope this survivors, oh man, accounts are not gonna be happy with you guys. It's two ships in two weeks. And being the curious little mouse that I am, of course I had to go closer to get a good look at what exactly had just happened. What was this place? What was this technology? Clearly, I wasn't the most intelligent life form on this planet. Luckily, I had just the key to open up the door to go inside and investigate. So after placing down my purple tablet and revealing the door, I went inside, just hoping there wasn't any aliens nearby. I swear, if an alien comes around this corner, I'm gonna have a heart attack. As I continued searching the facility and downloading all their data, and having my PDA trying to attempt to translate all the information. Of course it is. And like a moth drawn to light, I found this strange object called an ion cube. Ooh, this is shiny. You're not gonna miss this, are you? Good, because I'm keeping it. And after further searching through the facility, I came to the strange hallway that revealed a drop down that worked similar to Earth's elevators. Okay, I'm not gonna lie, that was freaking awesome. And after making my way down, I discovered a massive pool of water. Clearly some form of docking station for the massive alien submarines. I then found another purple tablet and used it to reveal another door. I hope I eventually get to keep one of these. Oh, what the hell's behind here? This was the control room. And as I cautiously made my way up the pathway, I saw a illuminating button that I was able to push. Ooh, what does this button do? But pressing it was a huge mistake. Oh, what the hell is that thing? <gasps> Sir, ow, ow, ow. What the hell? Did you just give me a COVID vaccine or something? But quite the contrary. I was now infected. And to leave this planet, I had to get myself healed. So I made my way back the next morning, saying goodbye to the alien facility and then repairing my seam off before I would make my way back. See, I was now not able to get rescued nor leave the planet. I knew I had to set up a base in order for me to survive. Until I figure out how to get cured. I then checked out all my loot that I actually got from the time capsules and it revealed an awesome blade as well as a very cool rifle. I never even knew I had them. The next day I decided to check out the location that they spoke about when I was on the island. This place would have a ton of resources. All the resources I would hopefully need to start setting up my base. As I went around scanning all the appliances as well as a cool bed and then grabbed their PDA. Now clearly since I didn't survive here this wasn't the best location but it had a so called large source of metals. So I went searching around, found a container that contained a battery as well as a scannable floodlight. And after filling up my inventory I decided to make my way back to drop off supplies before coming back the next day. Of course, first I had to get myself sorted on some dinner. So after filling up my tummy, I had a quick look at what I would need to build some habitats. And the next day I sat back out, trying to locate the cave down below. Finally finding it and then going around grabbing all sorts of hard metals. Lithium was the primary resource that I required. And then after finally grabbing all that I could, I spotted this massive volcano erupting. I'm full. Oh, what the hell? Let me go, you stupid worm. 
Luckily, I survived and it let me go. I need to get the hell out of here now. And I quickly rushed to grab some air at the sea moth. And then once I had enough, after dropping some resources, I grabbed the last bit of diamond needed. And then made my way back to the sea moth, back to the life pod and constructed some pastel ingots. The next day I sat back out in the search for some stalker teeth. See, the only way to get this is by hanging around some scraps and hoping they would break off some of their teeth when they go to pick it up. And now a good dentist, please just... Oh, finally, I've been waiting forever. As I farm teeth the entire day, you're probably wondering why exactly I needed this. You see, this is the primary ingredient to make enamel glass. The next morning I went to search for life pod 12. Now this was extremely deep and also in a radiation zone. And I wasn't paying attention. I didn't even have my radiation helmet on. As I dropped down to the bottom to quickly grab the data disk as well as the PDA, I saw just how low my health was. As I rushed back to the SEMO. I need to get the hell out of here quickly. Oh, I'm gonna die. But luckily I actually had some first aid kits on hand and it was just enough to get me back home safely. Oh, that was a close one. I definitely needed to keep more first aid kits on hand. The next sunrise finally signaled it's time for me to start settling down as I went out and searched for a base location. I wanted to be close to the metal source so I settled on a cliff just above it. Dropped down my large habitat since I was playing this after the new update. And after that I filled in some hallways, added floors for stability, built my observatory as well as a multi-purpose room. And now it was just time to check out the space. Emergency power over. Why is the power offline? Oh, this place looks so cool. And after packing up, it was time to go home for the night, but I didn't even notice my Seamoth was out of power and I was forced to go back using the Sea Glide. This is Altera HQ. This may be your only communication. What is that, Neeps Gaming? You can't send a rescue ship all the way out there, so Aurora, you're just gonna have to meet us halfway. That's so Abstro. to the ship's We're computer. Sandwich run, you in? Uh, yeah, give me a second. Black box data shows the high I didn't know they did the voiceovers. Code should be this is so cool. I probably should have paid a little bit more attention since that was quite an important message. After finally being able to craft a new power cell, I was able to grab the last resources for my bioreactor. And now armed with everything that I needed, I made my way back to the Seamoth to get it powered back up again, switching out the old battery and then hopping back inside. Thank you, miss. I then placed down some solar panels and this was enough to power the place up. Oh, the lights are on. This place looks amazing. Oh, well, ju I just love this. This this looks so cool. Now, since the room was a little bit too big, I started constructing some walls in between, but quickly ran out of material and went to cook my dinner in the life pods fabricator. But the next day determined to add one in my new home. I then completed the walls for my bioreactor room and went out for another resource run adding some wall lockers so I could have plenty of storage space. But quickly ran out of material and the next day I was back out on the grind, finally completing it up. Now let's see if I can keep this place organized. I then added the fabricator as well as a new radio, a medical kit dispenser and then spent the rest of the day adding labels to all my storage lockers. I added large lockers for my equipment and then dropped off all my supplies. And then day 25 was officially moving day as I went back and forth grabbing all the supplies from my life pod and then dropping it off back at home base. This took quite a few trips as by this time I already had three storage lockers floating around. Finally I had dropped off all the final supplies and it was now down to the final trip. Clearing out my entire inventory, dropping it off and then dropping a new beacon to signal my home. Then putting my new fabricator to work as I cooked myself dinner and then loaded some storage crates and added some windows before calling it a night. The next day I added myself a scanner room but I didn't quite know how to get inside it. I added some more hallways and then wanted to connect it up to yet another multi-purpose room that will become my bedroom. I also added a glass dome as well as some windows but didn't pay attention that this was damaging the structural integrity of my base and just as I wanted to drop down a bed I noticed the place started to flood. Let the lights go off. Oh no. oh no, the place is flooding! After remaining completely calm I quickly rushed outside to add some more support. But the place was still flooded and I now had to search around for all the damaged areas to repair it. But after repairing it, the danger wasn't over just yet. See, I was nearly out of oxygen and luckily the water drained low enough for me to catch a breath of air.
And after waiting for the water to subside, I was finally able to drop down my double bed and started by adding some more decorations. I also added some desk a chair to sit on and then went outside to add more solar panels, but the lights were still not going on, so I searched around for some more broken panels, but it turned out the scanner room was the problem, and after removing it, the lights went back on and I was able to cook up some dinner and then enjoy my bedroom before calling it a night. The next day I ventured back to the island as I wanted to scan some of the flower pots that I had missed on my first trip here. After scanning it, I also grabbed some lantern fruit. I then searched around for more blueprints to scan before going back to the seamoth, going back to base and calling it a night. The next day I grabbed the remaining resources to drop down my flower pots and plant my lantern trees as this was the fuel source for the bioreactor. Now even though I had solar panels, I did want to have an alternate fuel source for those rainy days. I then added some modifications as I still wanted to make a way into the scanner room and I wanted to expand on the base. Finally I made it inside and wanted to see what I needed for the modifications, so I also decided to add a hatch frame but again damaged the structural integrity. It's like a lemon learn. Seriously. Ah, it's just one. Our integrity restored. Draining systems initiated. And after the crisis was averted, I made my way back into the scanner room to quickly check out what this bad boy could do. See, it had these camera drones that I could use to scout around safely from the comfort of my bedroom. This was pretty awesome. But eventually I had to brave the waters myself again until I saw another one of these leviathans. He's then back, mister. Oh, that's terrifying. But only in the depths were the fragments for the moon pool. Detecting multiple leviathan class. Life forms in the region. Are you certain whatever you're doing is Yes, working? lady, I turned around. Can you not see? Disappointed that I haven't found it, I quickly restocked my bioreactor and then took back to the search to Mushroom Forest this time. A known location for Moon Pool as well as Cyclops Fragments. See, the Moon Pool would allow me to dock my seam off and hence be able to apply some much needed upgrades to reach even further depths. After some more continuous searching around, I finally found the fragment. Man, is that a relief. So I made my way back and quickly started constructing it, but from the excitement, I completely forgot about structural integrity even a third time and with that my base was sinking yet again it is normal to experience psychological discomfort research indicates symptoms may be partly alleviated by adopting a pet maybe she's right maybe i did need a pet to stop doing stupid things like maybe take on a leviathan with a blade but more on that later. For now, I was finally ready to start taking on the depths. I now wanted to start constructing myself a Cyclops. So I went searching around for more fragments, breaking into another door of debris and then searching around. But after only finding battery charges, the search continued back to the mushroom forest, finding another part of the bridge and then finally completing the bridge blueprint. Now all that remained were the engine fragments, but I decided to rest up for the night, recharge the batteries of the Seamoth and after a quick repair I was back out in the ocean depths, taking to a place called the mountains. Okay, I'm not gonna lie, this is by far the most terrifying place. Did you just bump me? So once the coast was clear, I repaired the Seamoth and then finally saw a fragment. But something was quickly draining my health and I had to make a run for it. It turned out to be some form of sea plan. I also found the fragment for the modification station. Seriously, can you just give me like a moment of peace, please? And then found another engine part right next to these plants. And I saw the way they were actually damaging me was by shooting these darts. I was down to a slither and simply couldn't risk it. So after spotting a life pod, I made sure the coast was clear by killing the two sea monsters and then making my way inside. Grabbing another fragment as well as a toy car and bobblehead. And then finally the search continued. Just as I lost motivation and made my way back, I saw a piece resting on a cliff edge. And with that, I had done it. I had successfully unlocked the Cyclops. After arriving home, I dropped off my toys and had a quick look at what I needed for the Cyclops and modification station. I quickly constructed it made myself some new slippers and then made the missing materials for the Cyclops. And the next day I finally constructed it. And this thing was beyond massive. I couldn't wait to jump inside. Finally making my way on board, exploring through the holes and then seeing that I could actually change the name as well as the colors. Say hello to the Ops Clubs. And with that, I powered up the engine. Powering. Oh man, this is so awesome! Taking it for a quick spin around the bay and then slowly dropping down to dock back at base. This will have to wait until I'm ready for the dips. Oh, it's even got a horn! That's so cool! I can't believe I built that with my bare hands. 
I get Fana used to help with drones, but still, it's pretty cool. I then grabbed my daily first aid kit, and the next day I wanted to go search for the vehicle modification station or the Seamoth. But this place was so dark I had to double check it was still daytime and then I spotted a luminous green light in the distance. So of course I went over to investigate and saw it was alien technology again. But this time I didn't have a tablet so I went back to the Seamoth and waited out until morning. I again went down the same location but quickly reached the maximum, maximum depth. depth reached. And when I hopped out and realized my repair tool was out of batteries, I decided it would be safer to go back home first, recharge the batteries and go out the next day. And after quick repairs, I was back out on the search, going to a different location this time that also might have the fragment I was looking for. Finally I had the blueprint and I also found a thermal plant fragment nearby as well as some parts for the prawn suit. But after hopping back in the Seamoth I was tempted to explore the cave below me. So I made my way down the deepest I've ever been. Why do I always let curiosity get the better of me? Oh, what the hell is this thing? Fish, fish. And after shaking down the blood sucking fish, I spotted this weird purple object nearby and it was a gel sack. I also found some rubies on the wall and then tried to scan another gel sack, but I got shot by the dart shooting plants and I made a run for it. And then quickly made my way back to catch a quick breath of air before returning back to search the wall and grabbing myself some more rubies. I then spotted a massive open cavern nearby and went to search for something warped right in front of me, something I had not seen before. And there's a good reason for this because this my good friends was an alien. Are you chasing me? You're chasing me, aren't you? <gasps> oh, you're so freaky. Get away from me, please, sir. What the hell even are you? I then rushed back to the Seamoth and felt more determined than ever to make those vehicle upgrades because being out in the open without a vehicle felt terrifying. I dubbed the Seamoth the Opsmoth and then went to make all the necessary upgrades so I would be much better defended as well as reach further depths in the ocean. I also made myself a sonar so I could navigate in the deep dark corners. The next day I decided I wanted to learn a little bit more about these aliens. So I made my way back to the original facility that blew up my rescue ship in the hope to find yet another tablet for the room I discovered. But I heard yet another warping behind me. Of course you're here. Why wouldn't you be here? Don't mind me, sir. I'm just going to the beach, okay? And after docking on the beach and a quick stroll looking around, I finally discovered yet another tablet. Now I had the means to open the door. But there was so much more to discover about this place, including some form of teleportation device. Uh, is this even safe? Can I go through here? And after summoning up the courage, I ended up teleporting to a far distant location and was surprised to learn that I was back on the island. This must have been how these aliens got around that quickly. The cave was also filled with a bunch of loot as well as at the very peak of it, yet another tablet. But since it got pitch black, I decided to hop back in the Seamoth and make my way back home. But the aliens had other plans. What the hell's going on? Did you just seriously teleport me out? How rude. But not only was the action of pulling me out of the Seamoth extremely rude, it was also damaging me as I quickly hopped back inside, only to be pulled out yet again, I was down to a slither of health, forced to lead him away with the sea glide and then cautiously made my way back. Oh, tell me I was far enough away this time. And also, please tell me you're not following me, you stupid alien. On my way back, I passed over another section of the Aurora, but this place needed me to cut through the door. So I rushed back to base to make myself the laser cutter and then went back to search for the ship. It felt like I was lost for hours, even finding the wrong sections of the Aurora, but finally I tracked it down. Well, I did have to review my footage and hence I didn't record the moment of me cutting through the roof. But I was disappointed to find a completely empty room, even though it led to another hallway that only ended up leading outside. I had just completely wasted my time. At this point I was hard at search for a cell charger so I could keep powering up the Cyclops. More aliens? Seriously, can you leave me alone please? You see the Cyclops uses a lot of them and I definitely needed to be able to charge them. Spotting another part of the Aurora gave me hope. What prawn fragment? What? What? What was that? And even though I found a bunch of good stuff, it wasn't what I was looking for, so I decided to go back to the alien room. This time I was armed with a tablet and I just hoped that there was something valuable inside. I was feeling a bit lost at this point in time. 
finally entering the room, all it ended up revealing was another bunch of these green cubes. And a dart of this that was completely useless to me. So I made my way out. I just wasted that. So I made my way back home. Disappointed yet again, I went out for another search. Determined to find that cell charger blueprint because I really needed it. Warning, entering the ecological death zone. Clearly I was way too desperate as I was searching in places I shouldn't have. And when I got hit by a mysterious enemy, I knew I was in depths that I shouldn't be in. Down to just 11 health on the seamoff, I quickly hopped out and repaired it, but I got snuck upon by another alien and finally tested out my rifle. And while they were frozen in position, I was able to go to work with my blade. I've had enough of you guys. What the hell, where did he go? Yeah, you better run. I decided to go out on one final search attempt. And if I don't find it this time, I would give up and refocus on mission objectives. After having no luck at Blood Kelp, aside from seeing some aliens and grabbing some red gooey balls, I took to the underwater islands, where I got chased around by an army of beady eye sea monsters. But I continued searching around, high and low in the hopes to find the fragments. I even searched on the top side of the islands, but after having no luck, I took back down. Nearly got excited when I saw something on the cliff edge, but it was a pulsation cannon. Something that would be useful to blowing into the aurora. I had a quick pit stop at the life pod to refuel my food and water and then took back to the depths. Finding a part of the aurora that revealed a bunch of prawn suit fragments, as well as my very first piece of the prawn suit. Oh man, I can't wait for this thing. And after numerous more searching around and not having any luck with what I was searching for, I made my way back to the sea mob. Spotted another beady eyed sea monster and then I saw my sea moth was nearly blown up. It was down to just 10 health. If you guys blew this thing up while I wasn't here, I swear. Another brief food and water pit stop and then taking to the dunes one final time. Well that's until I ran into another ghost leviathan. And I knew from experience now this thing could kill my sea moth in just two hits. Evasive maneuvers! Evasive maneuvers! Oh, what the hell? There's a second one. Where did you even come from? Ascending as quick as I could, I was in serious trouble. As I leaped out of the water, I still got a hit and was down to just half HP. Luckily, I managed to get away from them and once the coast was clear, I repaired the sea moth, made it back to the life pod and cleared out my inventory. Screw the cell charger. I was going to use the sea moth to search the aurora. But nowhere there was an entrance to be seen. Even on land, I couldn't spot anything. I did a quick battery swap out and then spotted something on the ocean floor and I quickly grabbed the dart of this that hopped back inside only to be grabbed by a leviathan ladies and gentlemen this is the end of me but he lost his grip and I had a moment to get away I wanted to repair the seam off but just as I hopped out he grabbed it and it exploded in front of my eyes so I boosted away in the pitch black water using the sea glide man I just put a new battery in that thing Feeling filled with rage, I finally reached my home the next day and prepared a new sea moth. But I was determined to get my revenge. Aboard, As I docked it in the base and named it the Ops Moth 2.0. I then quickly got to work to remake all my upgrades and this time I wanted to weaponize it. So I added myself a torpedo system. Luckily I had the gel sacks and rubies needed to craft the upgrade and then started making myself some hull reinforcement and grabbed all the materials I would need to make a bunch of torpedoes. Once I had them made I armed up the seam off and I was ready. Good day to go leviathan hunting. Using my sonar system, I managed to track down the culprit and got ready to engage. Take that, you stupid up. No way to support next torpedo. It's useless. Other than making it spin like a toilet, I knew I needed to make other plans, so I switched to my alien killing strategy. Freezing up the leviathan and then going in with my thermal blade to give it as many cuts as I could. But I was running out of oxygen and had to retreat back to the seamoth. To buy myself some time, I shot it with another torpedo and then went in to engage. But once I got close, the vortex damaged me and maybe these torpedoes weren't that worthless. But what the hell, where did he go? Mr. Reaper City, did I kill you? It seemed it got meshed into the ground and not long after I spotted it again. Got ready to engage, but this time missed my shots and I was in trouble. That was supposed to hit, what the hell man? Please don't scratch it, it's a new paint job. Luckily I managed to get away again, but my sea off was on a slither of health. I rushed to get another torpedo shot in and make a run for it. But I crashed into some debris and I was down to 7 health. 
Another misfire, and now things were looking grim. Sorry, sir, leave me in a no, 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 no. <laughs> I miss my dad. <laughs> As I beamed away, I was able to tell the story that I had survived the Leviathan. And after healing up, I was able to make my way inside the Aurora, cleared up some flames in the way, and then proceeded inside. And after cutting through the door, I found the ship's black box, and then proceeded to make my way through the maze of debris, managed to find a way through the broken pipes that revealed the prawn docking station. So I killed some more fires and searched for the living quarters, grabbed myself some snacks as well as water, and scanned a vending machine, killed some more fires, and then found this door that required a pin code. So I continued searching around, and after repairing yet another the door I was able to make my way inside and search around further, found the data box with a code and then cut through another door and made my way inside the room, only to get nibbled on again. Seriously another one of these things get off. I searched around the room and found more data boxes but other than that it was pretty much a dead end. So I decided to make my way back and start scanning all the prawn suit fragments finally revealing the blueprint. I then had a quick look to see what the code was and made it back to the living quarters to enter it. But other than a pretty cool duffel bag, cabin one was pretty much empty. So I grabbed the voice log and went to the captain's quarters. And that's when I remembered that important voice log. I had the password to enter the door. And as hope came over me the captain was still alive, I was met with an empty room. Aside from the most important blueprint of them all, my ticket out of here, the Neptune. I quickly cleared up some space so I could grab the toy Aurora and then made my way back to search through more parts of the ship. I found yet another locked door so I proceeded to go back, retracing my steps to search for the passcode when I spotted this hallway that I completely missed. Led to the cargo bay as well as the administration room. No, wrong way. And finally after tracking it down and extinguishing some more fires, I got the launch code for the Neptune as well as some more voice locks. Revealing the code to the final door that I needed to gain access to the lab. Once I made my way inside, I found another data disk, but all that I could scan was another furniture counter. This is disappointing. And with that, I was done exploring the Aurora, and I could finally get out of here before this place came crashing down on top of me. Don't you worry, I'll be back. So I took the long journey back home with a sea glide and then started adding some fish to my aquarium and grabbing some more at night so I could finally have some companions. That's so cool! I also added my Keep Calm Kitty poster as well as some more decorations from the Aurora as well as the mini figurine. I then added the microscope as well as placed myself down the vending machine and made some pot plants and planted some small lantern trees. And to finish off the day, added another hat to my collection. My room was coming together awesome. The next day was time to grind out all of the upgrades yet a third time for another Seamoth. And after crafting all those I could, I went out to grab some more nearby resources, made my way back to make the lubricant, and then finally I was able to make yet another one. I swear this time things are gonna be different. I then went to dock it inside base and dubbed it the Opsmoth 3.0. And then after applying the nice paint job, added all the upgrades. The next morning I made my way back to the life pod to grab all the things I dropped off and then turned my focus to making the prawn suit. Searching around for some broken teeth so I could make the enameled glass and then finally taking my very first nap in my bed. Uh, it's hard work man. And then waking up the next morning so I could go and search for some gel sacks as well as rubies, the last missing ingredient to the prawn suit. I went to search in my my nearby alien cave but this time I had to explore even deeper to find what I was needing. What the hell is that? After finding more alien-like structures, I knew I had to get out of here. So finally, I made my way back and I was able to craft up the final resource. And once I had the aerogel, I quickly made the prawn suit. Just in time as the sun was setting, but once it dropped in the water, I noticed the problem. Look at me being smart, building this right above the cave entrance. Even though the prawn suit dropped right to the bottom, luckily this bad boy had amazing jumping skills and I was able to get back and get it docked ready to start working on some upgrades. And the next day on my to-do list, I added myself the depth module, jumping module, drilling and grappling arm, and then took to the depths in search for crystalline sulfur as well as nickel ore. I went back to where I saw the massive leviathan skull and quickly started searching around finding another alien door, but this one required a yellow key card. Luckily, I did spot some nickel ore nearby, and after grabbing it, I spotted something strange. Mister, why is your brain outside? Okay, you're chasing me. I don't even know if you're threatening or not, but I, nap, 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 you're coming. Having zero experience with this creature, I thought the safer bet would be to get back to the Opsmoth. Finally jumping inside, I learned this creature had a strange ability, as it sent out an EMP blast, knocking out all power in the area. I rushed to get into the Opsmoth and then made a run for it. 
Once I finally had my bearings, I shot it with a torpedo and launched it somewhere in the ocean. Finally, the coast seemed clear. <laughs> Where the hell did it go? Oh man, that thing just launched away. I then journeyed below the green brine and spotted the crystalline sulfur, but little did I know it could damage me and my friend was back as well. You get away from my steam off, I've lost enough of them already. And after finally getting away, I went to search for some more sulfur, but I was about to become victim of another EMP blast. And after losing power, I was a sitting duck, and after it bumped into me, I quickly got away and repaired the moth. Risked my life again going underneath the brine to grab another piece of sulfur and make it back to the moth to quickly heal up. Searching around I finally found the final piece that I needed. Quickly grabbed it and made my way back. Hopped on board and luckily I was able to hottail it out of here. Curious to see what other mysteries this cave had, I then stumbled upon a strange facility. Detecting a titanium mass somewhere in this area. Unable to confirm whether it originated on the Aurora. I lost all power again and it seemed like they were guarding this place, so as much as I wanted to see inside, I didn't want to lose another Seamoth, so I decided to make it back to the base for now, wondering if the Cyclops would fit through here. But just as I turned around, a ghost leviathan was right on my tail and I had to rush to get the hell out of here, and luckily I was able to navigate just past the attack and make my way safely back to base. Once I arrived, I started working on all the necessary upgrades that I wanted to apply to the prawn suit. Also adding myself a storage locker and then I got another distress call. It had been quite long since I'd gotten one. This is life pod 2 coordinates attached. We're way past our safe depth and bleeding O2. But for now they would have to wait as I was really curious to test out the prawn suit and also looked up what I needed for the second depth module. And the next morning dropped down to the cave below so I could put my new drilling arm to good use, gathering up all the gold and lithium that I could possibly carry. Completely filling up the storage module and grabbing a bunch by hand before before making my way back up to base. Welcome aboard, Captain. And then offloading all the goodies I got with the prawn suit. The next day making my way back to the alien cave and after using some sonar located the entrance and dropped down a beacon to possibly test out with a sub. I got a bit lost as I was searching around for the facility but finally after navigating through the maze like tunnels inside this cave it was in my sights and this time it seemed like the coast was a little bit more clear. So I made my way inside just to get another EMP blast, completely disarming my sea glide. Luckily it quickly powered back on and I was able to grab the PDAs as well as the blueprints. I continued searching through the facility all the time hoping and praying that my Seamoth was okay. Finding the yellow tablet and then most importantly of all a coffee machine and then quickly rushing back to the Seamoth. And I breathed a sigh of relief as the Opsmar 3.0 was luckily safely intact. Navigating past some aliens I made my way over to the green alien door the next morning placing down my yellow tablet. Hoping this time this room would reveal more secrets but as I made my way inside I was disappointed to only find fossils. So I downloaded the data box and grabbed some more ion cubes before making my way out searching the rest of the tunnels. And that's when I came upon the biggest facility of them all. The Alien Research Center. Cautiously navigating my way inside not knowing what the hell to expect. I was definitely feeling nervous and I started swimming around. Seeing all sorts of eggs and alien experiments. Residual biological evidence suggests indigenous life forms were brought to this location and subjected to intensive study. I downloaded yet another data box and then was told to scan myself. Self scan complete. Bacterial infection has spread to the skin and pulmonary system. Well that wasn't good news at all. And that's when I started feeling a strange sensation coming over my body. And when I looked to my hands I knew the virus was spreading. My time was running out. Placing down another purple tablet and then downloading all the specimen research data. Integrating new Finally I was data. able to make my way out of here. But just as I thought I was getting away I got sucked up by another alien. But it was nowhere in my sight. So I quickly rushed back to the Seamoth. My health was dangerously low and as I got sucked out yet again I thought it was the end of me. Another quick look around and seeing no aliens I took one final risk and luckily this time I got away. 
This time my exit was on the other side and I was close to Life Part 2's location. Stopping here was definitely profitable as I got the Cyclops depth module. I also dropped down another beacon as this was another possible entry and then finally made my way back home. Filling my tummy and healing up, I placed down the coffee maker. Yes, I can. Coffee, please. Bloop. Oh, give me that caffeine, man. This is going to be good. Mm. After being dosed up on caffeine, I was ready to make the death module and made my way aboard the Cyclops. I also discovered all these storage containers, so I started offloading some materials. I also added a whole bunch of structural items to my to-do list and finally made the high-capacity O2 tank. Went to offload a whole bunch more materials and then added the depth module to the Cyclops and now I could seriously dive deep. The next day I tested out the loading bay as I docked my prawn suit, dropped off even more materials and also added a fabricator. All that remained now was the reinforced diving suit as I went to search for another part of the Aurora, finding another lightweight capacity O2 tank and then cutting my way inside to search around for the blueprint and then finally finding the voice logs as well as some food and drinks. Problem was I didn't know how to make synthetic fibers for the suit. So after making my way back home and docking yet again, I went to search it up. I needed some more red goo. So I finished loading all my materials and then finally I was ready to go out on my adventure. As I drove down to my beacon, I knew I would have a quick pit stop at Blood Kelp to grab the goo. Something was approaching my ship just as I was outside to grab the goo. Oh, what the hell was that? What the hell's going on? Why is there a creature attacking? <laughs> Hello? Oh, there you are. Luckily, the threat wasn't all that bad, so I quickly hopped out and shot it with my rifle and then went back inside, quickly crafted the benzene as well as the fiber and was able to make the suit. But before I could put it on, I was under attack yet again. So I rushed back to the captain's quarters and sailed the sub to safety. Finally, it was now time to make my way into the caves. And boy, was this a close fit. Can I just say I am the best captain alive out there. Just look at this. That was majestic. Navigating further through the lost rivers, it revealed yet another drop down. The place that I was searching for that led to the inactive lava zone. Finally, I made my way down and saw the giant tree as my landmark. Switching off my sonar and parking right where I wanted to set up base. So over the next few days, I placed myself down a thermal plan to gather up energy and built myself a small base of operations and then connected the power to it. Things got a little bit hot at the thermal plant, but finally my base of operations had power. I now just had to farm some more titanium and then finish decorating the inside of my cabin. Dropping down a glass dome, the place was officially done. I then started making all the upgrade stations for the vehicle and was now a step closer to the final prawn depth module. All I needed now was to make my way into the inactive lava zone. And this place was hella terrifying. There you are, you beautiful thing. With the kyanite crystals officially in my sight, it was time to put my jaw to good use, gathering up even more titanium and making my way back to base to make the module. My prawn suit could now officially reach max depth. Let's go baby, time to go deep. And that's just what we did as we went exploring even further in the lava zone, revealing another door that led to another alien center. I made my way inside and navigated through the volcanic-like maze and then finally made it to the other side. I then had to take a huge leap of faith, but luckily I had my grabbing arm to save me. Unfortunately, for some reason, the prawn suit didn't go through, so I parked it outside and I made my way in on foot, dropping down another purple tablet, revealing the door to the blue one. I didn't know why I needed a blue one, but I had it. The path then led to yet another room where there was a bunch of data disks to download. Integrating new PDA and then finally grabbing the most important one, the details to the knowledge of iron cubes. PDA data. I also discovered another terminal and after making my way through, I saw I was back at the original facility. This was nice to know, a neat little shortcut. But for now, I had to make my way back to base. After restocking, I was ready to go even deeper. I heard a strange noise and that's when I saw one of the biggest creatures I have ever seen in this game. This thing was absolutely terrifying and it also shot lava balls. Don't tell me you're chasing- Oh, what the hell? You're shooting lava! As I made a run for it, it was hot on my tail and I could only find a quick drop down and luckily this was where I needed to go. Upon reaching the bottom, I saw another cave entrance and that's when a weird alien started talking in my head. 
Lady, this is so not the time. I'm hanging above lava. I am what you seek. Want to help you. You're gonna make me die. Luckily, I was able to land safely on a rock edge, barely missing the lava. And then made my way to the final alien facility. Nervously making my way inside and dropping down the blue tablet to gain access. As I made it up the pathway, the light started to light up for me. Not only did I feel welcome, but I felt completely terrified. I cautiously made my way through the rooms one by one, grabbed another dot on this, Integrating new PDA data. and then found this strange creature, the Sea Emperor. After searching around some more, I stumbled upon a strange water park and I really wanted to go down the slides. I was then prompted to open up a whole bunch of portals, but I only bought a few ion cubes, so I had to drill for some more. But thank goodness this was here. I hope that's what it's supposed to do that is freaking me out. Now that I had the final ion cubes, I was able to open the last two remaining portals and then made my way to the front of the facility. I needed another blue tablet and since I didn't have one, I had to go back to make one and then finally I was able to open the door nervously making my way down. This was where things were about to get crazy, as I summoned up the courage and dove down into the water, not knowing what to expect down below. What the hell is that? Detecting unusually passive behavioral patterns in nearby predators. Are you here to play? Others came here once. They built these walls. They played alone. They bored me. Now they're gone. And instead, we have you. We are curious whether you swim with the current or fight against it as they did. Wait, so lady, what exactly do you want me to do? I was prompted to place down another ion cube, but this one didn't open a portal. In fact, it started up some strange form of incubation center where her eggs lied. My young need to hatch, to play outside this place. You help us, I will give you food that the others tried in vain to take. After she blew the sand away, I was able to drop down another iron cube, revealing another portal. Okay lady, what's next? With the passage you have opened, my young can leave this place. The time is right and break free of their shell to you. I give the secret willingly. And now I had the recipe to make the hatching enzymes, then found out the portals led to the exact locations where I could find all the ingredients. And once I had all four done, I went in search for the final one, located in a cave right beneath her feet. The plant life in this area is growing outside its normal conditions. Other life forms fertilizing and pruning the vegetation may be offsetting well, this environmental the deficit. Lady, your babies must just wait. I'll be back soon, okay? I'm gonna go make it. As I made my way through the volcanic zone yet again, I got chased by the massive lava monster. I had to grapple to hold onto an edge and then really got to see its ginormous size. This thing was terrifying, but luckily I got away. As I did some Spider-Man-like maneuvers and navigated through the inactive lava zone all the way up to my underground base. Finally reaching it and then crafting up the enzymes. Oh man, the alien lady is going to be so happy with me. Once crafted, I made my way back through the lava zone, re-entered the facility and then ran up the lighting pathway to nervously drop down below to her chambers. I didn't know what exactly I needed to expect to happen next. As I dropped down, I got ready to place the enzymes, starting the hatching process. My young are swimming for the shallows. I thank you. Their freedom is my end. Farewell. As I heard the heartbreaking news, I spotted a floating object and of course I was curious enough to stick my hand in it. It started to spread all over and that's when something miraculous happened. Because you see, these enzymes started floating with antibodies throughout my veins, slowly and cautiously breaking down the disease that I had. And just like that, I was cured of COVID 2022. So I made sure and gave myself a quick little scan. Vital signs normal. No remaining sign of bacterial infection. 
and it was now time to go through the portal and make sure that her babies at least made it out safely as I saw them swimming away. I then jumped up to the facility as I knew there was just one more thing left to do. Turn off the planet's defense system so I could get the hell out of here as I rushed into the control room. Oh man, please tell me this is gonna work. Oh, no, he's got my hand again. Nap, nap, not today, not today. What are you gonna do about it? <laughs> again. You stupid. Ow. See, this time I wasn't infected. Maybe it never infected me in the first place and it was just a scam. As I rushed back through the portals, it was now time to start making my way back home. I knew for as long as that defense system was offline, I could get the hell out of here. So I said goodbye to the underground base and I started navigating myself back through the maze-like tunnels and safely and cautiously navigating through the tight corners and then finally making it out. Sailing through the depths of the ocean for what would hopefully be my final time as I made it safely back to base, docking the Opsclops one final time. The next morning I constructed the Neptune platform, the platform that would be used to launch my hopeful rocket and escape off this planet. I then had a quick look at what I needed to make next. And next was the Neptune gantry, as I then spent the rest of the day gathering the materials and finally the next morning constructing it, now having the means to make my way up to the top of the rocket. I was definitely feeling the nerves build up, this has been such a big moment, I felt like I was on top of the world. Next up I constructed the Neptune's booster and when it was finally done I just had the fuel reserve left and I used the new alien technology to construct myself some ion batteries and cells constructed myself the fuel reserve and I couldn't wait to test these bad boys out. Of course I also needed the cockpit and it required the Cyclops shield generating system to hopefully protect me from any space debris as I would leave orbit. After making the polyaline as well as the advanced wiring kit I was ready to make the generating module and by the next morning I constructed the cockpit. Now the Neptune was finally done and I nervously made my way on top to see the final moment. Man, this is so freaking cool. Making my way inside to do a full system check as I turned on the auxiliary communications as well as hydraulic systems and then made my way to the top. Seeing the heart of the ship passing by and then made my way upstairs to turn on the computer systems. Followed by the time capsule and of course I had to leave one. I wrote down a powerful heartwarming message asking everyone to please subscribe, loaded it up with some goodies and then as it was now night time I went to spend one final night back at base, resting up and then the next morning saying goodbye, goodbye to the base that have gotten me so far, the true means behind my survival, goodbye to the bioreactor and goodbye to you kind there. Of course breaking my heart to say goodbye to the coffee and vending machine and then grabbing my toys, grabbing my fish friends and then setting them free. Goodbye guys you be safe watch out for leviathans. And then nervously climbing up. It was the day of launch saying goodbye to planet 4546b. As I nervously rode the elevator up I had survived 100 days in subnautica entering the launch commands into the control module and then starting the ignition countdown. Feeling nervous I heard the Ten, count go off. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Igniting my boosters and pulling off a successful launch. Time capsule jettisoned. As I started breaking through the atmosphere I felt nervous about going into orbit, hearing the warning of some oncoming debris. Caution, approaching orbital debris field. Luckily I turned on my shield just in time as I saw another plane come loose. Oh I made it! I made it, I survived this time. Orbital debris field clear. Finally performed a turning maneuver. Performing gravity turn maneuver. Confirm destination coordinates. Engaging ion boosters. And after engaging boosters, I warped through a wormhole, not knowing where the hell I would turn out. But you see, out there, there was another planet. More locations that the other ships went to. More survivors and possibly more ships out there. 
and of course there would be more threats as we explore these unknown worlds. Cause you see I still had family out there and my sister was in grave danger. Even though I didn't know it, it was down to me to reach her in time before it's too late. So comment below if you want to see 100 Days Below Zero. A huge thank you to Raid Shadow Legends for sponsoring this video yet again. Make sure to join in the next 7 days and play consecutively to earn Ronda Rousey. Remember to use my promo code for new players to earn yourself the awesome pack. My name's Kruger Ops and thanks so much for watching. Thanks to my Patreons and hey, if you enjoyed this video, here are some more that you might just enjoy watching. I'll see you guys again soon and Happy New Year.